as someone with a long-term commitment to the success of Iba Girls School in South Sudan, let me welcome to this event, education especially for girls as a catalyst to peace building and for a transition to the democracy and the rule of law we want. And in particular, let me welcome Pia Philip and all those who have been courageously involved in peace building and in education in their own communities in Western Equator Equatoria State and nationally and internationally. I wish you well in the conference you're holding this week and hope you will get the results that we all want to support girls and boys to get the education they need. Estelle, you were Secretary of State for Education, and before that you were Schools Minister, before that you were a, a school teacher. What got you involved in education, and why is education important? Um, gosh, it, it seems such a long time ago now, but I did start off, I went to teach training college when, when I finished school. And for me, and be careful the way I say this, that politics and education have always been connected in the best sense of the word. I've always been passionate about education and I've, I, am, I love politics because politics is about trying to change things for the better, wherever you live, changing the world, changing your community, changing your family's life chances. And when you look how that's possible, education becomes the answer. So sometimes people shy away from ever saying there's a connection between politics and education, yet there's an absolutely huge connection. But I spent my 18 years teaching in um, an inner city school in the centre of Coventry. I, it was a great school. And because I was there so long, we, we sort of, uh, most of our children um, were from families that had just arrived in the United Kingdom. And as the waves of immigration changed over the years, so, when I taught, we had a lot of the refugees from Idi Amin's Uganda, East, East African, Asian families. And then that changed to Pakistani and Bangladesh. I remember us having some Vietnamese boat children and it moves on. And you think you realize that for those families who've taken on that, 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 that huge risk of moving their family to another community, they look to schools and education as making it worthwhile, as giving their children and the next generation life chances. So I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that's, that's the only point of education. I, th there's lots of others, but I think that's what I've always liked about education, that the power of it to change lives for individuals, strengthen communities and bring about world change. That, that's magic, it, it operates on every level. I started teaching in the early 1970s. Mm. And if you'd have looked at, in, in, the, in the United Kingdom then, in, in England and Wales then, at the exam results, girls were far behind boys. At, at every level, at every time we measured attainment, girls were behind boys. And if you looked at who went to university, girls were behind boys. So although I'm not for a minute saying it's comparable, it seems that every country needs to go on this journey that really establishes the importance of education for girls and for women. Yes. And we all need to do that. And because we're at different stages in the history of our school system, it's not, it's not the same. But it's, it's interesting to think that I can't think of a country that's, that's not had that issue of having to work that bit harder and sometimes immeasurably harder to, to establish girls' education. I was listening to the radio this morning and the first anniversary of the Taliban taking over back over Afghanistan and what's happened to girls' education there. But I think back to my early days and I think you'll understand this. I had lots of girls who were really high achieving, mm. but I did have lots of really brilliant girls whose families came from overseas and just didn't want them to stay on at school, uh, arranged early marriages, and didn't want that for their daughters. It's not that they didn't love them or care for them or want them to have a good life, but their version of a good life was to be a good husband and mother and stay in the home. And that is a good life for women who've chosen it. But I think we need to remember, it's not about saying that's not the right thing to do, that's what you choose. It's always about giving girls choice. There's a phrase, isn't there? If you've only got a bit of money and you want to invest it somewhere, invest it in education for women and girls. Because 
that the, the power of them to work with their children will bring about even more important. And I'm not saying education for men and boys isn't important. It's, it's really important that no message disempowers them. But because of women's role within families, what they can do with their own families in raising expectations and aspirations and supporting their sons and daughters to understand the importance of education means that, you know, when you look at a girls' school, we know this, don't we? It's not just what it will do for those girls. It's what they will do for their families in every single generation to come. It's like unlocking a door with educating girls. It's a powerful movement to go right down the generations.